Welcome to the channel everyone. In today's video, we'll learn how to place OCO bracket orders on the Active Trader Pro trading platform. You'll be able to use this as an incredibly simple way to automate some of your trading. Creating an order ticket to close you out of your position if things ever go against you, while also placing an order to close you out if you ever hit your profit target. Whichever one of those two orders fills first, the other one is automatically cancelled. So basically what we're doing is getting protection on one side and a profit taking order on the other side, both working simultaneously. Now in today's video, we're going to be going through two separate examples. First on a position you already hold in the account, and then secondly on a completely brand new position that we haven't even bought yet. Now starting with that very first example, doing this on a position we already hold in the account, if we look up here on my positions tab right now, you can see I currently have a position on SoFi. So right there you can see I only have one share of stock currently and I bought it for $9.47 and at the moment it's going against me quite a bit, it's down to $7.87. So let's say in this very first example I want to put a stop out there saying hey if this thing drops any further, let's say if it ever drops below 7 bucks, just get me out because I want to cut my losses. But also let's say if it also goes back up to let's say 20 bucks a share, I want to sell it for a profit automatically. So what we're going to be doing is creating a conditional order, and in this case an OCO bracket order, one cancels the other. Now in order for us to do this, what we need to do is come up here to the trade and orders tab and go ahead and click on that. From there, a large menu is going to come up with all of the different tools that we could add, but what we need to do is come down here towards the bottom and find and click on the button mark conditional trade. Now as soon as I click on that, you're going to see a new little pop-up window come up, and at the moment it says right here the trade type is a contingent order. I'll do my best to talk about this in a later video, but for right now what we need to do is actually click on this, and in this list down below we can see all of the different conditional order types available to us. Now in our case, since we already have a position in the account right now and we want to put out a bracket behind it, what we need to do is find and click on one cancels the other, or OCO. So let's go ahead and click on that. From there you're going to see two little boxes appear down below and this is where we're going to set both the limit order to take our profit as well as the stop order to stop us out if we ever lose too much money. So let's just go through this one step at a time. The first thing we need to do is enter in our symbol here, which in our case is going to be SOFI because that's the position I currently hold, SOFI, go ahead and hit enter here. As soon as I do that you can see the symbol box over on the right autofills as SOFI as well and we can see some basic stock information for SOFI down below. From there what I need to do next is come up here to the action tab of the first section, go ahead and click on that. From there what we need to say is we want to sell this position, so let's go ahead and click on sell here. The next one in the list there is the quantity box and we'll go ahead and click in there and just go ahead and type in one because I only have one share of SoFi in my account right now. Right below that you can see the order type is already set as a limit order which we're going to leave it as that, but we could always go ahead and click on that and you're going to see all of the other order types available to us right below. But again we're going to leave it as a limit order. Right below that the very next thing it's going to ask us is to actually set our limit price. And in my case I'm going to say if SoFi ever hits 20 bucks a share I want to go ahead and sell it. That's my profit target. The next thing you can see there is the time and force option, which is basically just how long do I want this order good for. So as of right now you can see it's set as a day order only. That simply means if this order does not fill by the end of the day today, just go ahead and cancel it. Now in my case I do want to change that, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the word day here. And then right below there we can see good until cancelled, or we could set a custom date for this. In my case, we'll just go ahead and make it a good until cancel order. And for those of you not familiar, good until cancel just means this order is going to go out there every single day until it fills. So if I'm not able to sell this position today, it's going to try again tomorrow. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, it's going to try again the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and so on, until it either fills or until I come in here and cancel the order. Now, besides that, the very last thing it asks us is if we need to set any other conditions. And if we go ahead and click on that, you can see the only option there is do not reduce. Now in all honesty, I doubt you guys will ever use that. That simply means if this company pays a dividend, do you want the limit price to reduce by that dividend amount or do you not want it to reduce by that amount? Like I said, I doubt you guys will ever change this, but this is how you would do it if you needed to. In my case, I'm just going to leave it as none. So now that we got the profit taking order taken care of, let's go ahead and move over to the stop order next. So over here on the right hand side. Looking here you can see a lot of it is already pre-filled out since we filled it out on the left hand side. It already has SoFi in here, it's already marked as a sell order, I already have one in the quantity box. And right below that you can see the order type is already marked as a stop. Now in my case I am going to leave it as a stop order for this example, but if I were to click on that, 
Down below in this menu, you can see there are a ton of different stop order types available to us, whether it be a stop market order, a stop limit order, or the various different trailing stop orders. Now, like I said in this first example, I just want a simple stop market order to go out there, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the word stop here. Then finally, the very last thing I need to do is set my stop activation price. In my case, I'm saying if it ever goes below seven, put out a market order to close this thing out because I don't want to lose any more money. So looking back through this order ticket, we've got everything filled out as need be. All we have to do is come down here to the preview button. Go ahead and click on that. From there, it's just going to give me a little confirmation screen, just confirming everything we filled out on the previous screen. And then if I actually wanted to place this, I would simply come down and select place. Now looking up here at the top, you can see that the order has been received by Fidelity. And if I exit out of this, looking over here on the right hand side, we can actually see that OCO bracket order that has been placed. And then obviously if I needed to cancel it, I would simply hit cancel right here. It's then gonna confirm that I do wanna cancel this portion of the OCO bracket order. So if I did, I would just hit cancel order. Now definitely be careful with this because I only canceled half of it. So if I wanna cancel the other half of the OCO, I need to hit cancel once again, and then cancel the order. But I think you guys get the idea just running through that quickly once again. If I wanted to place an OCO bracket on a position I already hold, I simply come up here to trade in orders, click on conditional trade. From there, we get the little conditional trade window pop up. And what we need to do is change this trade type from contingent to one cancels the other or OCO. Now remember, you're gonna use this one, the one cancels the other, if you're already in the position. And then from here, you just need to enter the symbol we wanna do it on, the action for both, how many shares you wanna sell, and then once you're good to go, preview it and submit it. Now moving on from that, let's next go over how you guys would do this on a position we haven't even bought yet. And it's actually pretty much identical to the way we just did it. So going over it one more time, again, you're always gonna access it using this trade and orders tab up here and then selecting conditional trade. Now, really the only difference if we haven't even bought the position yet is that we need to change it from an OCO order to a first triggers OCO. So looking over here on the trade type, let's go ahead and click on that once again. So click on the word contingent here. Now, instead of looking at the one cancels the other order, we're gonna look just below that and actually select one triggers an OCO order. So let's go ahead and click that. From there, you can actually see that Fidelity actually gives you a little bit of a breakdown of exactly what we're gonna do. It says order A here. If order A executes, then orders B and C will be placed. So it's basically just saying that the first order, the opening trade has to fill before the two closing trades go out there. That's all it's saying. So in this example, let's say we wanted to put a trade on PayPal. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to the symbol box and I'm gonna go ahead and type in the symbol for PayPal, P-Y-P-L here and hit enter on the keyboard. Just like before, you can see the symbol boxes all get filled out over here on the right-hand side, as well as the current price for PayPal down below. Now, in this example today, I do want to buy a position of PayPal. So I'm going to come over here to the action and select buy here. In this example, we're going to do this on a position of five shares. So I'm going to go ahead and type in this quantity box, five shares of PayPal. Right below that, you can see the order type is pre-filled as a limit order, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And the limit price I want to buy these PayPal shares for is going to be 105. So I'm saying if PayPal ever drops down to 105, I wanna buy five shares of stock. So now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna move over to the OCO bracket portion of this order ticket. So coming over here to the right-hand side, we can see a lot of it's already been pre-filled. We've already got limit order in here. The only thing we really need to do is set our limit price and then change the time and force to good until canceled. So in this example, I'm gonna say if PayPal then goes back up to 120, I wanna go ahead and sell it for a profit. That's my profit target. So we're gonna type in 120 and change the time and force to good until canceled. We'll next move over to the stop activation price and I'm actually gonna change this from a just normal stop order. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and I'm gonna use a trailing stop percentage. So coming down here and selecting trailing stop percent. Now that I've got that set, the only thing I need to really do is set the trailing amount. And in my case, I'm gonna say if it ever drops by 10%, get me out of this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in this box and type in 10. You guys can probably see just the right of that. You do have the ability to base it off of a certain price. So in my case, I'm basing it off of the last traded price. But if you go ahead and click on that, you can base it off the bid or the ask as well. You guys can always change that. But in my case, I'm always just gonna leave it on the last traded price. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that once again. And then if everything looks right, if I'm happy with it, I would simply click on the preview button down below. Now in my case, I don't actually have enough money to even do this trade, so we're not actually going to place this, but this is how you would create a first triggers OCO or a one triggers OCO bracket order. 
For those of you who might need a little bit more practice, let's go ahead and exit out of this and do it one more time. So again, come up here to trade in orders, come down to conditional trade, or see the little conditional trade window pop up. From there, we're gonna come over here to the trade type, go ahead and click on that. And then remember, if we don't own the thing yet, we need to go to one triggers OCO, the very last one in the list here. You then simply need to type in the symbol of the stock, how many shares you wanna buy, and then fill out all of the profit taking order and the stop loss target as well. Now, if you guys do not wanna have both a profit taking order and a stop go out there, so let's say you guys wanted to buy these shares of PayPal, and then if that order filled, you only wanted to get stopped out if it dropped 10%. In that case, this would not be a one triggers OCO, that would instead be a one triggers the other. So let's go ahead and click on that just as a quick breakdown here. So in this example, you can see the little description says, if order A fills, then order B will be placed. So running through that quickly, we're again gonna use uh, PayPal as the example, PYPL. We'll go ahead and change the action to buy. We're gonna do five shares of PayPal, and I'm gonna use that same 105 price target to buy it. Coming over here to the right hand side, I'm again gonna change this from a stop order to a trailing stop percentage, and I'm gonna base it off of a 10% offset. So now you can see really the only difference between what we just did and this one is the fact that this one does not have a profit taking order along with it. It's gonna go up continuously. You're not set to sell it if it ever hits a certain profit target. But I really hope that helps. That's really everything you guys need to know to place bracket orders yourself on the Active Trader Pro platform. If I did miss anything or you guys have any additional questions for me, please let me know down below. And also be sure to check out my other tutorial videos if you guys are wanting to learn more about the platform. Um, but that wraps things up for today's video. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you on the next one.